Hello and welcome to episode 4, I believe, of the uh, Cinema 4D Basics that I'm just uh, developing at the moment. Um, so we've covered so far, we've covered the uh, basics of viewport navigation, we've covered the customization of the GUI and startup screen, we've covered introduction to primitives, booleans and basic lighting. Now I was going to make a video about the material library and the object library and how they interact with each other but I'll save that for the next one because I want to show you the volume builder now and the reason I want to do that is because it works very well with primitives booleans and um, you know you can you can use the volume builder to do cool stuff so um, let's just get stuck in and see what we can do so right here you have the um, the interface this is, this is my startup interface that I customized um, I've deleted all my uh, objects and materials that I would normally have when I start a new scene just to keep it nice and clean. We'll start with a cube. Okay. We'll start with a couple of cubes and a bool. Okay. So we'll give ourselves this, uh, duplicate that. And here we go. So one of the reasons I use the volume builder, okay, is because Obviously, when you bool stuff, it doesn't give you the cleanest geometry, like um, on the edges and stuff, um, and also it doesn't bevel things the way the way you might like them to be beveled. So if we kind of go this way, okay, so we've got our bool going on here, which is groovy. But if we want to fillet those edges, you see it doesn't obviously, like I said in the last video as well, it doesn't fillet the um, the edges of the of the boolean area. So that, that can be a bit of a, a, a bugger. I'm trying to not swear. My, my friend Ken told me I shouldn't swear on, on YouTube. So um, I am a prolific potty mouth, I have to say. But I'll do my best. And I do apologize if I swear. I'm not going to re-record the whole thing if I swear. So you just have to bleep it out in your head. So anyway, um, we will drop this bad boy into a, a volume. Now, I'm using this new software OBS. It's new to me. Uh, and it doesn't record when I do the menu at the top, the drop down menu. So just bear with me. I'll tell you what where to go and you, and you should be able to just see it. So um, at the top, um, you have file, edit, create, modes, select, tools, sp spline, mesh and volume. So you want to click on the volume tab and the drop down one comes and you click on volume builder. What I'll do is I'll just tear that off. So, you know, you can't see that either. Brilliant. Well, I need some settings adjusted here. Um, but anyway, you can click on the volume builder and you get your volume builder here and then you drop your bool into it. And what the volume builder is, it's not actual polygon geometry that you'll be dealing with. It's a method of rendering called voxels. Now, the voxels will be converted to a, a mesh. Uh, I think it's a quadrangular mesh by default it's in a number of 4D but when you're actually interacting with the um, objects the, the volume built objects it's uh, the voxel based you can adjust the voxel size right in here uh, you have 100 millimeter voxels what I normally do is um, I can probably go down to one millimeter it might tell me off yeah it's told me off okay so let's see what happens next um, Let's just wait for that to calculate. If it takes minutes, then I'll just fast forward it. Uh, but it should be okay. I think 10 millimeters might do. Okay, so yeah, 10 millimeters would probably be okay. So you can see we've got kind of smooth, uh, nice kind of geometry here. Um, if I want to stick some, I'm not, well, I'm not going to actually bevel because it's, it's not really necessary. The volume builder kind of naturally bevels it for you based on your, obviously, your, um, your settings here. So you can go and real kind of, let's say, man, I wonder if we could get away with five. Yeah, five will do. So yeah, so we, we've got our nice beveled edges here on our on our volume built intersected cube. I'm not, I'm sorry, not intersected, but um, a subtract b cube. Um, you could probably create a single object from that the same way as you would normally do stuff with, with the Boolean. And um, yeah, so you've got your, um, let me just go into my render settings, turn off global illumination because then we won't be able to see the preview. But oh no, we can't see the preview anyway. Why is that? Because that 
is because we haven't actually created any geometry yet. So we need to go back into the volume menu at the top here. I am clicking on it. I can see it. You can't see it because of this OBS software that I will configure at some point. Um, so uh, you get a thing called a volume measure and you stick your volume builder in there and all of a sudden you've got geometry uh, that you can actually render, which is groovy. Um, so if we look at that, we can see that's quite quite a lot of geometry. And you can adjust these settings. You don't really need the cube to look like it's got a billion polygons. Um, the volume measure, you can generally, the voxel range, I thought I'd leave it at 50% because um, it does weird stuff. If you don't, um, well, it can. But you can you can you can move that slide around and it does does kind of cool stuff. Um, so yeah, if we turn that off, we can kind of work interactively. Like there's a lot of stuff in Cinema 4D where you know if you turn this on, it can it can really sap your processing power. And you know if this was a comp really complicated, and it is complicated, but if it was really complicated, and you didn't have the like the greatest GPU or whatever, you might struggle. But you can just kind of turn this off, arrange all your stuff as you see fit. And then you can turn it back on when you want it, and, and then you hit render or whatever. So that's how you'd roll with that. Um, the volume builder itself has a few settings. I quite like the SDF smooth tag. You can stick that in there, and it'll kind of smooth stuff out. But you can see it's made it a bit chunky. It has made it a bit chunky. So um, we, we might want to change the settings there. So, like, you know, you can kind of um, you can reduce the strength. And that will kind of give you a bit less chunk. Um, the there's there's various operators. You know you can just play around with these and experiment with them. Median and mean and Gaussian. I used to pronounce it Gaussian because I didn't know how to pronounce it before. Um, but it's 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 actually um, an algorithm by I think was it a mathematician. I can't remember. My memory's rubbish. Yeah, that, there's your interesting fact for today. Your interesting half fact for the day that you have to go and Google anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, voxel distances, you I mean there's loads of adjustments. There's always loads of adjustments in a 4D, but the thing is you don't really use half of them half the time anyway. They're good to have if you're really experimenting, but like you need to get a job done. You just want to sort of stick it in the volume builder and crack on. And you can do you can do all sorts of cool stuff with the volume builder. Like if you say if we if we got rid of this bool, or should we just just you know just make it editable or whatever? Because we've created a single object, so when I hit C it's gonna combine them. If I hadn't created a single object, it would still leave me with two objects. So let's stick a sphere in here and, and see. We'll combine that in there as well. See, now that is in the volume builder and it is now part of the geometry. And um, yeah, so the, the builder is creating um, kind of, well, it's doing its best to create kind of beveled edges here, but obviously with the sphere, it's a little bit tricky. So there's a bit of an art to it. I mean, there's never ever going to be getting away from the fact that if you want to do 3D modeling, you have to do subdivision surface modeling. If you wanted to be a 3D modeler full time, I'm not, I'm a 3D illustrator. I have a guy that I can go to and he will make me anything in 3D. Like if I wanted to um, rent, like model this water bottle, I don't know if you'd see that. Um, yeah, if I wanted to make a model of that, he could literally, I could send him it and he, he would just literally like do it with his genius. Um, and you know, it's, it's a bit like that with any with any creative industry. Because, you know, if you're a WordPress developer, you might spend a lot of time downloading and billing your client for plugins because you're not gonna sit in your butt all day doing plugins, like coding them up in PHP. Uh, so yeah, sorry, the world is like that. And um, I, I download a lot of models from, uh, a lot of models from TurboSquid. Um, they're not sponsoring this video, but, it, but if they want to, yeah, feel free. Um, yeah, so, you know, this, this is the kind of, Thing that like the volume builders really opened a lot of opportunities here for, for people like me, for plebs like me to kind of come in and not rely so much on kind of outsourcing geometry and stuff like that. Um, let's make this sphere a little bit calm. Let's, 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 push, the, let's push the tempo, like, like Fat Boy Slim said, and, and see what we can do. You can see, I mean, there's, there's the update, it's still updating reasonably quickly. Um, and all the models I've shown you so far have been quite arbitrary primitives. Um, we haven't really done anything too meaningful just yet because, you know, this is just to get to grips with the, the grab handles and the buttons, really. So that's why that's why we haven't done that. But we will. We will. There's loads of cool stuff. Like, there's, we'll, do, we'll do a bit of um, subdivision surface modeling at some point. We don't necessarily need to actually use the subdivision surface object. We, we can um, use the other ones, like the lathe tool and the cloth surface and stuff like that. But... 
you know, I'll, I'll make that video once I've figured out how to make my, my drop-down menus appear in, in OBS Studio. If it is indeed at all possible, which I'm, which I'm confident it must be. So yeah, um, like for now, this this will get you out of the woods, you know. Um, so if we wanted to do something like, I don't know, um, let's do something a little bit like, you know, if you wanted to make kind of like, oh, just like, off the top of my head, a key. A key that you would put in a lock. Uh, so, you know, we, we could use our, bol vo our, our volume, our volume builder to do that. So if we just um, get a cylinder out, uh, we... and obviously the, the, the actual thing you, you have to consider as well, the volume builder is that the geometry of your base objects will affect it. So if you have loads of detail in it, it might overwhelm it. And if you've got not enough detail, you might just get a jerky. Um, so we'll just have a few basic height segments. So, you know, let's make it like a key shape. So we, we'll open up a cube and do that, sort that out. Um, and there we go. So like, you know, this will give us like a front door key style kind of key. I'm not going to go into detail with it, but you know, you get the gist, you get the gist. <clears throat> and they're, they're normally quite thin, aren't they? So, you know, just about do that. A little, a little notch in it. And and there and there we go. Okay, and let's look at what we could do as well. We could, we could Boolean out a little key, um, like, like that key ring holder thing on the top there. So what do we want to do there? We want to stick them in the bool. Uh, is that right? Yeah, so, oh no, we don't do that. We don't want to nest, and you can nest objects in Cinema 4D, but we don't really want to do that now. What we'll do is we'll stick our, stick our bool in here, and stick them in there, and then obviously we want to subtract the right one from the right one, and there we go. So what we'll do is, that, and you can put booleans inside other booleans as well. So if I wanted to create like this one, uh, if I create another boolean here, I mean, this is not a boolean tutorial by any means, but you know, you can just go bang, bang, A, add union B, and then you will get your uh, combined thing. So that's combining the cube with the bool, and the bool is subtracting the cylinder from the other cylinder. It can get quite frightfully complicated, actually. I have done it before where I've been kind of had to, had an epiphany, epiphany while I sat on the loo and I had to run to my computer. Um, and then do it because it was one of those things that was just racking my brain. And it will rack my brain because I'm not very clever. Um, but I, I work hard, you know, I make up for it with hard work. So so there. So, there. Um, so anyway, there we have a rough key shape. And we'll, we'll then stick this in our volume builder. Boom. And now we have a thing. Isn't that nice? We have a thing. So I can, I can see there's a bit of geometry evidence around the, uh, you know, the, the, the problem here is like the fong tag doesn't, hang on a second, no, yeah, get rid of you. So the fong tag doesn't um, NA to reveal your geometry. See now the fong tag's not quite uh, doing its job when we turn on the uh, the volume builder. Um, well, I've just had a thought. I wonder if we can actually apply a fong tag to the, the 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 the, the, fecking, the the volume builder. We probably want to actually apply it to the volume, to the volume uh, measure actually. But it's something I shall think about a bit later on. Let me just find where I got fong tag here. So I've applied the fong tag to the volume builder. Oh no, the volume measure's already got one. That's fine. Um, okay, cool. So we've got our key here. And obviously we want to um, put that in here and then mesh it up. I don't want to mesh it up too much though. Make a mesh. And so yeah, we've got that. Um, we'll have to just play around with this because the actual rotation segments, I mean, and this is another kind of drawback of it. When you want like curved surfaces like that, you can run into, get a bit stuck in the mud with the volume builder. And uh, like I said, it's not a magic bullet, but it does do the job. A lot of the time, um, so yeah, it's just it's like you know, if if I was going to do this, I'd probably subdivision surface modeling something this basic and simple that was within my capabilities. I'd probably just SDS divide and, and model that up. But um, for the moment, you know, we'll we'll just stick with the volume mesh tutorial. But yeah, you know, we've got a rough key there. Um, if you if you had like more complicated stuff, like maybe you wanted to bulge the middle of it with a little sphere, you could you could do that. And uh, yeah, uh, where are we? Are we over there? There we go. There we go. So we'll, let's drop this sphere into the volume builder as well. And now it's become part of it. 
so we just make a bit bushier and you know we've got this weird looking key thing now um so yeah um the volume builder it's i mean it's pretty good i mean you can see here where like we've increased the number of sphere sections we've kind of eliminated the um the the jaggediness and you can see where it's kind of um around this area here it's kind of uh you know giving us our, our bevel and that's that's pretty nice so, you know you could you know you can clean this up as well you can go into your you know, mesh the volume measure um and and do your voxel threshold and stuff you, you can see here look if you go right down to zero you can see the voxels becoming very apparent in the actual geometry itself because that's what this was built from and then you'll go the other way so this is why i say to leave this at 50 percent and just leave it at the default because it gives you generally the best result um you know there's loads of cool stuff you can do in mean, a lot a lot of it. you have to just experiment with this software that's what i've been doing for years and so i use it professionally and i've got my workflows and i've got my sort of design patterns kind of ingrained in me but you know the only way to learn this is just get stuck in it's the only way um but yeah i mean i'll i'll uh i'll leave this volume builder for now and um, there's there's more stuff you can do with it but by the by and large you know you, you want your kind of um basics down and obviously you know this being the uh 80 20 rule we don't want to go too much in depth into obscure features that you might use never um so yeah that was the volume builder in a very basic crash course but hopefully i've explained the gist of it uh, apologies for my phone i forgot to turn that off so if you like this video feel free to drop us a like and a subscribe and um i'll be back some other point with with the next video which i've scheduled to be introduction to materials the material and the object library which is which is this is the object object library here and the material library is down down here and so that uh will be what i'll explain next because you can obviously let your texture up your materials and that, that's basically it but there's loads of cool stuff you can do uh i won't go too much in detail i've got another one planned where you can you know, like import your psds and stuff but, uh, you know, let's again, we're doing this bite-sized digestible chunks. So hopefully this gives you a reasonably good introduction to the volume builder and the volume measure and what you need to actually make stuff happen. And um, I will catch you next time for the next video. Um, and I hope you've managed to find some value in this. And uh, all the best and goodbye.